first of all, I would like to thank SICA uh, for the initiative of having these TA user experiences. Um, just um, Nina couldn't come because she's at the United States, so I'm giving the presentation in her stead. Um, like um, introduce, I am part of the University of Namur. Specifically, I work at the Namur Nano Safety Center, and uh, we are the, one of the TA facilities. Um, so, I met Nina about um, a bit more than a year and a half ago, so we had some discussions. She was working in assessing the safety of uh, potential, potentially commercial nano-based uh, products. Okay, so for this TA access, she decided to focus on nano paints, and in a specific nano paints designed for the outdoors. So it is a concern for all of us what would be the potential nanoparticle release, especially after um, having some uh, realistic conditions, let's say um, some ultraviolet irradiation or after some uh, rains and so on. So Nina, um, he had this um, risk assessment data from the in vitro part and ecotoxicology part. And we at the University of Namur provided her with physicochemical characterization. Um, let me talk a little bit about what uh, Nina uh, was doing. So um, basically, uh, she painted uh, blocks of wool with uh, these uh, nano paints. Um, then they were either exposed for 14 or 13 days to the sun. Well, it's a, a UV irradiation simulator. Or there was no exposure at all. And then uh, there were two exposure scenarios, like leaching of a few minutes, some acute scenario, or a total immersion of these uh, blocks of wood into water of a fixed volume and it was done during 24 hours. Uh, for the sake of the time and this presentation, I will focus only on the immersion case only for these nano paints containing zinc oxide. All right, so, uh, and this work was, uh, was part of the NanoForce project. So, um, part of this um, in vitro data that Nina had showed that um, when we have this, this body is the base paint um, plus the nano zinc oxide is the potentially commercial product. So she found that at, with no irradiation and 14 days irradiation, basically uh, there was some level of toxicity, but after 30 days of UV irradiation, um, the toxicity was reduced. So what was going on? What we provided at the University of Namur were um, particle size distribution to know if there was a change in, the, in this uh, zinc oxide release. And also we did quantify the amount of the released zinc oxide. So we applied um, the two main um, instruments uh, we are promoting from the physical ch chemical characterization. Um, so the first one is DCS. Differential centrifuge sedimentation. So basically, we have a spinning disk, and we have a sample um, in a liquid med media, which is inserted at the center. So by centrifugal forces, we will measure first uh, the bigger particles and then the smaller particles. So, so um, in this way, there is a separation of the distributions, and we can have a higher, a high certainty that what we are measuring is actually quantitative, but on the agglomerate side and the primary particle side. This is the basic um, principle. The second technique is something a bit more unique called PIXI, particle-induced X-ray emission. We have an accelerator at our physics lab. Um, so basically over here, um, when you have a target and you radiate with protons, uh, the interaction protons with the atoms in the target uh, will cause the emission of X-rays. These X-rays are a fingerprint of each uh, element that is irradiated. So normally I can get plots like this where 
each of the peaks is associated with one of the elements present at the matrix. And um, the area of these peaks are proportional to uh, the concentration of that element. So uh, we were looking over, over here with PIXI for the amount of zinc oxide. Um, going briefly into the results, um, okay, over here I have three kinds of graphs for all of them. One was the measurement of wood. We wanted to be sure that the possible releases are not, were not wood, rela wood related. Uh, there was a bit of wood, but it's really uh, almost nothing in comparison with uh, the other releases. It's certain that uh, when, when the blocks are immersed only on the base paint, uh, there will be some release, but it is clear that when you have this nano, this nano paint with zinc oxide, the release is quite higher for all three cases. So after subtracting the data, um, I have over here the three conditions for immersion, no irradiation, 14 days UV radiation, and 30 days. So um, what we can appreciate over here is that uh, in, at all cases, there are two populations, um, what we consider agglomerates or aggregates or mixture of between nanoparticle and, and the paint and the primary particles. Um, remembering that in, um, in the in vitro test, there was a reduction of this toxicity at 30 days. So we can see that um, quantitatively, the amount of primary particles released seems to be lesser and even the, um, the peak associated to the agglomerates is also reduced. So with PIXI, um, uh, we corroborated this and ensured that, well, make sure that these uh, decreasing release are also associated to a decrease in the zinc oxide release. So um, here I'm, I am reporting the zinc um, amount in PPMs, so effectively, after 30 days of irradiation of this nano, nano paint, um, there was more than two times a decre decrease in the released zinc oxide, which we think is um, uh, well correlated with the data that Nina got. So um, this, is the, this is the TA user experience I wanted to tell. Um, I think it was something interesting because she had already some in vitro and some ecotoxicology data, which I didn't show, and it was quite well matched with our physical chemical characterizations. Um, so this is part of what we do at the QNano Transnational Access. Um, I'll be also in the TA clinic if there are any uh, questions or specific discussions. Finally, okay, so she's Nina, so at least you know who's her. And, um, this is the picture of the team of the Namur Nano Safety Center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a question? explain. Thank you. <laughs> or maybe it's so complex a question that will come up later in the discussion time. Certainly. I'll be avail available. Yes, thank you very thank much. Thank you. So I'd like to uh, go on and introduce the next speaker.